Guys, 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 guys. Do we have homework? Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't do it anyway. Who cares? Just school. Hi, guys. Hey! Hey, Miss hey. Carlisle, may we come in? No. Why? We don't want to be late to class. Because I said no. Miss Carlisle, please! Let me be clear. None shall pass. Are you talking about the doorway or the class? That was cheesy. You may enter. That's so unfair. That's not fair at all. All right, all right. If you can answer my riddle, I will let you in. Are you ready? I keep inside in and outside out. I tell what can move about. I love water and I hate it too. All cells have me, this is true. I have two layers and many parts, like those mosaics that you make in art. But those parts can flow like water down a drain. Who am I? What is my name? Guys, it's a toilet. Oh. Let me help you with this. I keep inside in and outside out. I tell what can move about. Semi permeable. I love water and I hate it too. All cells have me. This is true. Hydrophilic? Hydrophobic? I have two layers and many parts like those mosaics that you make in art. Yet my parts flow like water down a drain. Fluid mosaic? Who am I? What is my name? I got it! Yes, 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 yes. You're a membrane! Well done. Thank you. Hi, Stu. Are you feeling better? I'm so sorry you missed the membrane lab. But um, you can't come in today. For you, I have a quest. This is your mission. You must bring me three unfertilized ovum from Gallus Domesticus soaked overnight in a dilute acid. Can you do that? Bring me three chicken eggs soaked in vinegar overnight. Until then, no lab for you. One day later. It's pouring cats and dogs. You do know school started like 30 minutes ago, right? Wow. You know, this doorway is a lot like a semi permeable membrane because it lets students in between 7 30 and like 8 15. Just like a cells membrane will let water pass back and forth and other molecules as needed. The sad thing is, is that. I can't let you in. You'll have to go back in the rain, back around to the front office, but I will take these. See you in lab.
all cells have membranes. Membranes are made of a phospholipid bilayer and other proteins' carbohydrate elements. Osmosis is the movement of water across a membrane in order to reach equilibrium balance. Membranes like equilibrium of solute to solvent. Sometimes membranes are permeable, they'll let things in, and sometimes they won't. And that's why we're doing this egg membrane lab. And in terms of egg membranes, I have you bring in three unfertilized ovum of Gallium domesticus, which are chicken eggs that you soaked in a dilute acid vinegar. Uh, these have been here um, overnight, I think you've, you've told me. If they went a little longer, that was fine too. You can still see just a tiny bit of shell that's still there. Underneath that shell, which the vinegar removes, you actually have a membrane. This is the membrane of, of the egg. This is a single unfertilized cell with uh, no rooster in the hen house, so to speak. So what we're going to do with these is try this membrane to see what it will do in different tonicities of solutions. So we have two solutions here. We have water and we have corn syrup. As we looked at before, a solute plus a solvent makes a solution. So that is your drink bottle plus your drink packet makes a solution. So we are going to take some data about these eggs, put one in a hypotonic solution and one in a hypertonic solution, and we're going to see osmosis, which, which way water will move in response to the tonicities of these solutions, right? All right, so the first thing we need to do here on the lab sheet, day zero. We need the mass of the egg, we need the diameter of the egg, and we need the volume of the solution. And first things first, let's put this egg, yes, onto the scale there. Okay, looks like 86.7, let's put it right there. Let's get the diameter of the egg. For the diameter of the egg, this is a ruler that has been copied onto clear plastic. So we're going to wrap this around the egg. See where it overlaps. Looks like 15 centimeters exactly. Oops. Next, we need the volume. Since this is the water one, therefore I need to label this beaker A for water, we know that we have 200 mils. Okay, now gently put your egg right here in the water. We didn't lose too much water. Now you know why you're wearing gloves. We're dealing with raw eggs. So we're only wearing eggs for this lab because of the ick factor. We're handling raw eggs, and on the off chance that the handling raw eggs could make us sick, we're just wearing some gloves. On top of that, these have been in an acid for a while, which kind of cooks them, so it'll be okay. So let's do the same thing with egg two here measure, diameter, volume. Oops. Okay. 
87.0. Okay, diameter. Let's wrap it the right way around this time so we can read it. There we go. Fourteen point one centimeters. And we're going into 200 here of corn syrup. Already, if we look at how the eggs are riding in the beakers, we can tell we can tell a difference. There is more stuff in this water than there is stuff in this water. So this egg is sinking while this one is floating. This is a high per tonic solution because there's more solute in the water. And this is a high po solution. There's more stuff in the egg than in the water. So what, it, what we predict to happen is we want to know, will water go into the egg or will water leave the egg in response to the solid. For today, we're done. We need you to come back tomorrow and we'll take these measurements again tomorrow. And now you know because we're dealing with eggs and they can pop, which is why I had you bring more than just the two. Thanks, Stu. Stu, I'll see you tomorrow. Hey Stu, welcome back for day two. I can't wait to see what's happened with our eggs. All we need now is some PPE. So you remember yesterday when you brought me these eggs, it was pouring down rain, that we were trying to figure out osmosis. Now osmosis is the movement of water across the semi-permeable membrane membrane and what we have here are eggs with the shells removed and that exposes the membrane of the egg now we've put them in two different solutions a high po tonic solution and a high per tonic solution that means this is more water than stuff in the water whereas this is more stuff in the water than water and that will affect we predict which way water will move across the membrane because the membrane wants balance. Right, Stu? Excellent. So we're taking three measurements today, same three measurements that we took yesterday. We're going to get the mass of each egg. We're going to get the diameter around the circumference of each egg. And we're going to note the change in volume because if water goes into the egg, the volume will drop. And if the water goes out of the egg, the water should increase. And that will be proof to us that water has moved across the membrane. Ready? All right, now this, this is why we're wearing gloves and the apron, per, personal protective equipment. You're gonna pull the egg out and we're gonna let it drip, 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 drip. So this is the ew factor. Then we'll fly it over here and get the weight. Then back over it again, we'll wrap this around and get a good measurement, and I'll help you with that. So then we'll record water egg first. Let's go. Wow, that is up to 91.8 grams. And let's get you wet gloves and all to write that right there. 91.8. 
Excellent. Now, let's get the uh, circumference. Since the mass went up, you would expect the circumference to go up. And fifteen point four centimeters. Okay, looking at the volume, we started with two hundred and we are just underneath two hundred now. I put that down as like one eighty. 180 mils. Now, let's gently put him back. Splash. This is the one that the video is going to be cool on. So you're going to have to reach in and get him and it's going to it's going to be like grabbing at a deflated grape. Go ahead. You can pick him up by it kind of like by yeah. Oh. Wow. It's a big difference, isn't it? Wow, 46.9. Excellent. So, circumference. Ten point eight. Looks like the volume here has gone up to two hundred and sixty. Now we could run this for a few more days, but looking at the two. These eggs were about the same mass and about the same circumference just yesterday, 24 hours ago. Um, the volume is decreased here and increased here. Um, so what we have is when we put an egg with a membrane in a hypertonic solution, that means that the water was there was more water inside than outside and the water left in order to try to balance the amount of stuff on either side of the membrane. So when we put this egg in a hypotonic solution, it made the eggs fluid inside hypertonic and water moved in to try to balance the stuff in the water on either side of the membrane. Between these two, there is one thing we need to remember. Water moves to hyper. Whichever side of the membrane is hypertonic is the direction in which the water will move. Excellent. So, put it back. Oh. Okay. What would happen if we switch the eggs? I think that would be a great experiment to do and if we did we could hypothesize is that this one will swell and that one will shrink because once again the the membrane wants equilibrium balance between the water and the solute on either side how do we use this in everyday life when your parents brine turkeys or brine any meat before cooking, we're trying to get additional water and seasonings into the meat uh, to make those Thanksgiving turkeys oh so yummy. Uh, there are lots of situations in which we brine to impart seasoning and to preserve. And pickles is another great example. So this is it. Do we want to run one more day? Do we want to reverse it and see if it, see if it changes? All right, so why don't you swap the eggs, and we'll come back tomorrow. Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay, Stu.
One more day and I think we're probably good with the egg membrane experiment. Thank you for taking the time to come in and make up the lab. saw my very unprofessional covers of the lab. We didn't want anything to fall into the eggs. All right. So, looking at our data, we did really see that the water egg did go up in mass, did go up in diameter, and the volume went down. Uh, between day one and day two, whereas we saw the hypertonic egg uh, did go down in mass drastically, did go down in diameter, and the solution went up, which reinforces that water moves to hyper. Then we asked the question, what if we switched the eggs? Would the shriveled, gross, grape one reinflate to the great, big, happy, round, bouncy ball one and vice versa? And so that's what we need to measure today. So, do you want to measure this egg first? Yeah. There we go. There. Set it up there. Hope it doesn't roll off. Wow. So this was this egg. I'm going to write that we switched the solutions. That egg went from 46.9 up to 93 grams in the water. That is huge. Okay. Let's see what its diameter is. Fifteen point two, and the volume is down to a hundred and fifty mils. That egg was thirsty, very thirsty. All right, put that one back, and let's do this one. This was the previously hugely inflated egg. Seven point three diameter. Oh, doesn't that just feel gross? Twelve centimeters, and the volume is up to almost three hundred. to draw the beakers before and after. Beaker A was the water beaker. Say so we started off with an egg of an average size. We had more stuff inside the egg, solid that is, than outside. After we found that the egg swelled significantly, and therefore, since water moved in, we diluted the amount of stuff at least a little. So water moved to hyper. In this case, hypertonic on the inside, hypo on the outside. Right? 
egg B we had more stuff on the outside than on the inside. So what happened there was water moved again to hyper. In this case, water left the cell trying to balance the amount of solute on the inside and the outside. So once again, this cell was hypo this time and the solution was hyper. So once again, in both cases, water moved to hyper. What if you could put an egg in a solution that was the same amount of solute on the inside as the outside? But then it would be isotonic. In an isotonic solution, water would move back and forth whenever it worked, but there would be no net change. Right, Stu? That's exactly right. Thanks again. Now you should be able to turn in your lab sheet, and that's one more lab made up. Thanks so much, Stu. We like water. Cells like water. We like water a lot. In cells, how we make solutions and how solutions maintain balance is important. First, we need to understand that solvent plus solute makes a solution. And that's all it is. Solvent plus solute together makes a solution. You do this every time you add your drink pack to your water. What we get into is concentration issues though. I have different amounts of solvent. I could likewise have different amounts of solute. So this, even though this is more volume, this is more volume but this has more solute because there's more of this in this water than there is this in this water, right? Concentration. Now, what happens if we really, really load up the drink packets? This is more concentrated. And what if we separated these two solutions with a membrane? This solution is hypertonic. This solution is hypotonic the membrane will facilitate the movement of water back and forth until they are roughly at the same concentration. So even if I change the solution, water will move this way to dilute this out to about that concentration. Same thing if I move it this way. In any situation, when you're putting a cell in a solution, you need to determine where is the high per, high amount of solute, and therefore which one is the high po, the low amount of solute. And then you just remember one thing. Water moves toward hyper to try to dilute the extra drink packet. Now, in an isotonic situation, this is roughly three times the volume of this. So one of those and one, two, three of these, that would be isotonic and the water would just go back and forth and would just find its equilibrium. So if you don't think you'll never need this or need to use it, think again. What will most likely occur when a cell is placed into a saline solution that has a higher salt concentration than inside the cell? A. Water molecules will move into the cell. B. Salt molecules will move out of the cell. C. Salt molecules will move until the salt concentration is the same inside and out of the cell. D. Water molecules will move until the salt concentration
algal cells are placed in an isotonic solution. Additional amounts of solutes are slowly added to the solution. What happens to the cells? A. They will begin to swell. B. They will burst. C. They will stay the same. Or D. They will shrink.